So, hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So, today my HD 7770 finally arrived and I also just had it running so it does work. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna do a blind teardown now. Um, I don't really know what's under, like I, I have seen the PCB but I haven't, like I haven't removed the cooler of this. Um, and um, yeah, so um, I'm first gonna do the teardown and talk a bit about what we find under the heatsink. Then I'm gonna talk a bit about um, what I plan to do with this graphics card and yeah. So the first thing you can see it is obviously a Sapphire card. So yeah, there's that. It's also the Gigahertz edition of the HD7770 so it is the uh, PCB that's a bit longer than the normal HD7770 uh, PCB. Um, yeah, the one my friend uh, gets is also a Gigahertz edition, uh, only that his one is from Gigabyte and not Sapphire, but the PCB should be the same. Like, it, it I checked it, it's the same. Um, he only gets a different heatsink. So, yeah, um, it is pretty basic, like the HD7770. It, it wasn't high-end, it was mid-range or even entry-level when it came out. So we have one fan, um, pretty simple thin heat sink with two heat pipes and a plastic shroud about it. I actually lost two of the screws already. Um, so yeah. But I mean, let's... Uh, we've talked enough, so let's take it apart already. And there it comes. Oh, that thermal paste doesn't seem like it is. Like the thermal performance was fine, but that thermal paste looks like it is fairly old. Hmm. So, yeah, here we have it the bare PCB of the HD7770. And it should be pretty apparent that this is. Like th this, this is a pretty basic PCB. It should be the like it's the standard gigahertz edition PCB. I even think the like this is a this is just a normal Sapphire card as far as I can see. There is a Vapor X version. Like Buildside has one of those. I think that actually uses the same PCB. Might use different MOSFETs. I'm not that sure though. So. Yeah, so here you have the PCB. My first blue PCB, and I, actually I quite like it. Like uh, in real life, it looks pretty nice, um, and it's pretty easy to trace out um, like power planes and whatnot. So yeah, I I like this PCB, and I mean you can already see the typical AMD stuff. Like you have your two display mini display ports over here. You have your Crossfire. Uh, connector over here, and then the day uh, the die is not rotated actually, so this is the Cape Verde die, a uh, pretty small one. Um, like the HD7950 that I have had has the Tahiti core that is that one's rotated, uh, but this one is not. So yeah, and actually it looks fairly similar to this right here. This is my old GTX 650. It's a 2 gig card actually. So not 1 gigabyte like this one has. Um, but yeah. Um, and another thing that these two cards have in common is that they have Alpida GDDR5 which is not great. Like Alpida there, there's like I uh, apparently their GDDR3 was really really good and then their GDDR5 was just the worst until they stopped being a thing and were bought by Micron so yeah so I don't think that this card will go very far in terms of memory overclocking um but yeah, the the whole the whole reason why I have the card even and why my friend is getting an identical PCB is we want to mod them. Um, 
like we wanted a cheap card this cost about 25 euros so it's fairly cheap for a card like if you want to buy a gtx 650 even a one gig card not a not a two gig like this one you you can pay 30 40 up to 60 euros and this one is just very cheap and it's even faster than a 650 like this is um between a 650 and a 650 ti and um yeah so it has 640 cores i, I think um well the 650 has uh 372 i'm not that sure you can you can't just compare the cores like that but it's both 28 nanometers so yeah it should be like this is not double as fast with 600 something cores as this is with 300 something cores um yeah like it's it's between a 650 and a 650 ti and um yeah so i really like i really like this pcb it's nice and simple and even the cooler is like this one is pretty beefy for for what it is used on like if you uh, if you look at the 650 and this is also what most uh, hd 7770s come with it's it's just like a intel stock coolery thing it's just a giant blob of aluminum with some fins in it and this is also what most hd 7770s will come with and for some reason if i actually chose to use a fin stack here with two heat pipes so yeah, I already did uh, a couple passes of Fire Strike, and this card, it it stayed really, really cool. I doubt that it actually really makes a difference because this card is so low power. It shouldn't really be an issue with, like, there shouldn't be a thermal issue. But yeah, and you can see like this screw and this screw, the those already fell out. So I'm just gonna remove the other two ones and remove the shroud altogether. I actually quite like how the shroud looks, but having it only 50% attached is also not really a thing. Yeah, so here we have the shroud. And then here is the bare heat sink. Like, it is really, really small. It is kinda, kinda sweet looking. <laughs> Tiny little heat sink. Actually, it should perform better like this without the shroud. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm I'm gonna keep this uh, gonna keep this off. Yeah, and you can see these screw leads broke off on this shroud, so I'm gonna have to hot glue it on, or it's gonna stay off. I might hot glue it on. <laughs> like, yeah. So. Yeah, no problems with the heatsink. Uh, the one my friend gets is actually one of those that has a heat heatsink like this, but um, his one comes with a much bigger fan, and it should also be overly a bigger heatsink. And when I compare the weight of these two things, like this one is a lot heavier, just from mass. So if you're just running benchmarks, there shouldn't be an issue. Like my friend's not gonna be bottlenecked by his heatsink. If we do stress tests for 30 minutes, there might be an uh, might be a difference, but again, this is like a really low power card. You can see from the size of the GPU, the GPU is smaller than a GDDR5 uh, memory module. So yeah, this is a really low power chip. And um, actually, one thing is that I want to say about this: like this is more or less a reference PCB, like. Pretty much every HD 7770 has the same PCB, uh, which is why we didn't just choose like GTX 580s, um, because like the whole reason why my friend and I are getting the same card is we can, so we can do the same mods. Like we wanna get into hard modding proper now, and so we can, like, so we don't have to do anything on our own. We are getting two of the same cards, like the same PCB twice, so we can do all the same modifications. And um, yeah, and like these lower power cards pretty much come all with the same PCB, whereas like GTX 580s, yes, you can get a ref reference PCB, but then there's like also a whole bunch of other versions of the GTX 580. And um, 
Yeah, so this is why we chose such a low power card. And it's they like it's also very, very cheap. Like for some reason these low power AMD cards, they are really cheap. Like this is faster than a 650 and you can get it for half the price. And um yeah, and the PCB is even better, like you can you can really see like um so in the past Nvidia reference PCBs were really really bad and AMD reference PCBs were actually pretty good. And like with the 1080 Ti and the PCBs that came after, Nvidia kinda did a 180 and started making really really good designs uh, for the reference PCBs. But like the 650 is still from way before that and you can like both of them have a six pin. The 650 has uh what has it a 63 watt TDP or something? Don't really know. Like from the heat that this one outputs, it can't be that different. And like this one, like it doesn't have a VDDCI memory, uh, like it doesn't have a VDDCI VRM because it's not an AMD card, but um, so the memory rail on the 650 is over here. One high side, one low side, one inductor. That's actually pretty similar to the HD 70s and 70s, like this should be the memory rail. One high side, one low side, one inductor. And that's pretty much it, but the V-Core VRM, this one up here should be VDDCI. And then those three phases here are V-Core. And on AMD you not only get three phases, you get one, low si uh, one high side and two low sides. Whereas on Nvidia you get only two phases, which you can like under there you get two phases with one high side, one low side. And yeah. And also the I.O. is much better. <laughs> like, you, NVIDIA still puts VGA and a mini HDMI on it. Whereas with AMD you get DVI and full sides HDMI. I still don't know why the mini display ports are there, but like that's kind of like just an AMD thing that they keep doing. So, I guess that's why. <laughs> And yeah, so, and even if this card dies, because the, um, like, because the VRM is on the left side of the card, if this card dies, we can just saw it off, and we have a pretty much working VRM, the only thing we would have to do is somehow connect this 12 volts power source to the VRM. But like every other power source, which is the PCI Express slot, is already connected, if you cut it here. So even if this card dies, it's got to be quite useful. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, I really like this card, actually. And I also like the fact that it's a blue PCB. Like, blue PCBs uh, on photos look really, really ugly. But then, in real life, I kind of really like it. Like, I like how this looks much better than brown PCBs, like this one here, brown PCB, like this looks so much worse than this one. Now I wanna get a red PCB. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, maybe later. But yeah, um, so HD7770, um, not my first AMD card, like I have an RX i70 and an HD7950, but this is gonna be the first AMD card. And also the first working card that I'm gonna uh, that I'm gonna mod. Oh well, mm, might not be the first one because my friend really wants to do the mods when we meet up, and meeting up is kinda <laughs> not a thing right now with the whole lockdown. So, like, I'm still gonna overclock this, but yeah it might take some time until i uh until i i can mod it mm, maybe i'll find another victim <laughs> so well yeah but um like be before before this goes on for too long like this is a fairly short video audio recording is at 15 minutes now i think i just have two minutes where i did nothing so that should be a kind of short video and I want to keep it short too because I don't really have anything to say like I don't know which MOSFETs these are oh no they're on semiconductor well I'm gonna do a 
uh, PCB overview in a, uh, on another day. Don't want to go out and search for data sheets and then just smash it, uh, smash it to the end of this video. So I'm gonna do a proper PCB overview one day. Um, but yeah, so HD7770, uh, nice little AMD card, really cheap, nice PCB, and um, yeah, so this is gonna be the thing that that I'll be modding, and hopefully my friend will uh, be successful in his moddings of his card too, and hopefully we'll have a lot of fun with this, because I really, really like, like, um, yeah, now I get a, now I get to make the video longer. <laughs> Um, like, this is what I did last night. Um, like, I completely botched the 560 Ti 448. Um, like, I also modified it to sync a 6-pin so I can use it in on my burner power supply. Uh, because sense mod is still there. And then I attached a whole bunch of power bridges. Like, these two go to the VMEM rail over here. And all those other ones under this plot, there are also two more connections just go to vCore. Uh, some of these connections are really weak and flimsy, so I don't think they do that much. Like all the connections that connect to these bigger uh, SMD capacitors, the co those connections are pretty weak. Um, but I have some connections to, um, like this one connects to a multi-layer ceramic. All the connections at the core connect to multi-layer ceramics. Those connections look pretty good and sturdy to me. And they will also likely do the most because like closer to the core is better. That's the entire point of the power bridge, like bringing the VRM output voltage directly to the core. And not like to these, like the two connections that go to these two capacitors, they probably don't do anything. And then this one to this capacitor down here, which is covered in hot glue, probably also doesn't do anything. So, but yeah, like um, this is what I did last night. Um, and yeah, um, I really do enjoy hard modding, and I hope that I can do more. So yeah, but this is really the end of the video now. So yeah, uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this uh, kind of messy video. And yeah, until next time, bye.